Okay, let's start. Let me start with some R demonstration and then some lecture and then another R demonstration, another lecture. That's today's plan. Okay? So this is a part week three peak one uh, week three part one exercise. And to refresh the memory we had four companies and then we generated 1,000 or 10,000 random portfolios and computed the expected return and standard deviation for each of the portfolios and plotted it. And if you run this, it, the correct graph looks like this. Let me first explain how to, another way to run an R file. Of course, if you're using RStudio, you can simply click on this source icon. Another way is to use uh, this source function from R console. So you can say source and give file name in the quotation mark. And the file name is week 3 demo R, demo.r, case sensitive. Now, when you use this, you have to make sure that this R file is saved in the current working directly. Because the hard disk is a vast space, so if you just give file name, there's no way that the R file can, R can find the file unless you give the entire location of the file or the file is saved in the current working folder or current working directly. To know your current working directly, type get working directly with empty brackets. OK, directly means uh, folder. OK, directly means folder. And then it says, OK, you're currently here. So I should save my R file in this folder. And as long as it is saved here, I can simply say, run this file, and R will, file, uh, R will run that file. Okay? If you want to change your working, current working directly, you can either go from uh, this menu bar, session, set working directly, and choose directly, or you can use this set function, set working directly, brackets, and quotation mark, and you can give the entire path like Yeah, you can give the entire pass, and R will change the current working folder. Now, going back to our week three exercise, suppose we want to do this task. So I got a very good question, OK? And this is the answer to that question. <laughs> suppose I want to run this, I want to do this task not only for just n equal to 10,000, but also for n equal 100, 1,000, 3,000, and 10,000. OK? Of course, I can copy and paste this whole task four times, just changing the number of n. But in front of, uh, instead of doing that, instead of doing that, I can use another for loop saying, OK, repeat the following task for j equal 1, uh, 100, 1,000, 3,000, and 10,000. And the, I should give a vector of four numbers. And then the task to be repeated is this entire thing. <coughs> Let me increase the indentation to make it clear that this whole thing is in this for loop. And I can say, OK, you know what? I, I got a better idea. So I can say my ends is 
a vector of this. And repeat the following task for j equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. And for each j, n is going to be the jth element of nj. So when j is 1, n is 100. When j is 2, n is 1,000, and so on. And the rest is the same. Let me open a new window. So that R won't overwrite on the previous figure. So this is Windows is the command to open <coughs> open a new window. Okay? And if you're using Mac, you should use you cannot use Windows. They don't use the word Windows. If you're using Mac, you should say quotes. Yeah, that's the equivalent command for map. <laughs> and that's it. Save and run. Okay, this is n equal to 10,000. This is 3,000. This is n equal to 1,000. And this is n equal to 100. Okay? Now, the one problem is that if you open many new windows, then every time you run it, R will create another set of you know, four diagrams. And in the end, you have so many diagrams. It's a hassle. Now, if you want to close all, close all the diagrams at once, you can type graphics off with empty brackets. And that will close all the graphic windows. So you can add that. You can add this graphics off at the beginning of your code. And that way, when you run your file on the second time, R will first close all the previous windows. Does that make sense? OK. That was a short, quick demonstration. Let's move on to more lecture.